much for having us. You're a long way from a dairy farm where you grew up. Yeah. <laughs> Truro, Nova Scotia. Yeah. It's a great place to grow up, you know. It's a quiet sort of life, and uh, now I'm miles away from that, really. Houston, Texas, home for the moment. Yeah, living in Houston, and uh, kind of interesting how I ended up there. I went to college, uh, and then that led me through music to Nashville, and uh, I recorded an album there a few years back. And, and let, let's uh, not underplay that. Let's not skip over that. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, because your very first effort, your first CD, drew uh, international attention. Two Vibe Awards, that's Canada's People's Choice Awards, nominated for Juno, two top uh, radio singles from that disc. That's uh, neat. Wow. Yeah. And, and you didn't even present yourself as a, a great musician. You just got together <laughs> in the garage kind of thing with a bunch of guys Absolutely. at home. Absolutely. Well, essentially, um, we were in college, at Prairie Bible College, actually, and um, yeah, we just, there was a great group of musicians that were around um, going to the school that year, mm. or several years, and it just was a really neat opportunity to uh, really understand what collaboration is all about, especially, you know, musically and just in life, you know, sort of the mm -hmm. partnerships that we experienced in music were uh, really powerful friendships that have endured, you know, to this day. But um, started singing and uh, leading worship um, at the college there, and the CD, the first CD that I did, was just an outpouring of the songs that came out of those experiences. Mm. Now, you've uh, grown up in a Christian family, uh, church mm -hmm. background. I understand that your faith crisis, your life journey crucible, happened in the process of music success. Absolutely. I ended up uh, getting a record contract, going to Nashville. Um, which was really kind of blew me away because I'm first of all I'm from Truro, Nova Scotia, and then I went to a little tiny Bible college in Western Canada. You know, and you're so young. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting, you know. But I tell you, it was uh, I, it kind of caught me off guard, and I went down to Nashville, and it was so much um, about my own dream in my own life for myself that I had had since I was in high school. And when it started to happen, I guess I got sort of stars in my eyes, and I just started to really um, not necessarily have a good understanding about what success is from God's economy and not from what I grew up believing in our culture. And um, the unlearning of all of that has been several years, and it's included missions trips that I've been a part of. It's included a move to Houston, Texas, to a really wonderful community that's been so nurturing. And really, I think as an artist or as a musician in any capacity, it's really about serving, getting your hands dirty. It's far less about the celebrity life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found so much more joy in walking through a season of life together with a group of people from my church, from my band, just really honestly looking at what is God calling us to? What's um, the revolutionary life that mm -hmm. Jesus is talking about in the Gospels? You know, and when I read through the Bible in 2003, one of my friends had encouraged me to do that. It just blew me away because it's not that I hadn't read the Bible. I went to Bible college, you know, but it just, uh, it was just this fresh take that seemed like, you know what? A lot of things I believe weren't necessarily true. Things about success, the American dream, the whole thing that we, you know, s succeeding early and all that stuff, and, and I think God just... Having it all now. Having it all now, exactly, instant mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. And what about, what about working for something that you can pass on to the next generation that you might not fully see, you know, is that yeah. not worthwhile too? And I I'm thought, sure those missions trips were <laughs> eye-openers because so <laughs> many poured their lives out to prepare the soil yeah. for what's happening in countries like Myanmar. Well, and, and some of these people in the poorest of poor areas... W they taught us so incredibly much because mm -hmm. there was a peaceful center that they had and the love for their family that wasn't all about getting ahead or climbing some ladder and it was it's really relationships refreshing. isn't it exactly you know it, it, for you it's been about getting real and keeping it real right. with God and with yourself God says he desires truth in the inmost being and you've really worked at getting that place and you've reflected it in your titles mm -hmm. uh, Unlearning, your second CD. I yeah. didn't mention the name of the first one. Say it for me. Imagerical. Yeah, it's kind of a crazy, cool. weird, spacey name. <laughs> yeah, well, it got unspacey with yeah. Unlearning. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the second CD, which really stripped away all that commercialism. Yeah. You, you took a stand, which is very brave. Uh, it's just great to see in someone so young that you weren't carried away, not carried too far away, sure. by having everything a young person might want. Right 
Well, and, I feel very, lost in it. very blessed and lucky to have had those opportunities early on. I mean, really, you learn so much more by personal failure. You learn so much more by walking through some hard times. Mm -hmm. And I got to really early on kind of experience, I mean, in, in context, not really that bad of hard times, but, but definitely uh, sort of a death of my dream, which was painful. And I had to really sort of die to my own desires for myself, which is ironic because God's plan has been so much more fulfilling. He and hasn't so much ripped more you off at all, Not at all for that sacrifice. But it's so decision. funny because it's like you hear these things growing up, but when you actually walk through it, it's quite different. And uh, it requires just a lot of uh, prayer and also support from a strong network of, of friends and, and uh, community to sort of surround you with that kind of teaching and discipleship. Mm. You are on a one-month <coughs> tour of Canada. I don't know how much trouble you're going to be in for not making it to the East Coast, though. <laughs> well, I will be BC. there uh, this Christmas. I will be there this Christmas. And, okay. Uh, so I, I always play a few you know, little concerts here and there. They might not make it onto the website uh, tour list, but I'll, I'll definitely be uh, home for the holidays. Okay, you started October 13th at BC. <laughs> you get me in trouble, Mara. <laughs> well, I just, uh, first thing I asked was, are you going to get out there to Nova Scotia? Sure. Um, have we lost you to the U.S.? Are you going to keep coming back? What do you, what do you I see? really have a heart for Canada, and especially now that I've sort of gone through a season of really finding my voice as an artist, um, I got to do this new album, Where's a Revolution, in Nashville with a fantastic producer named Michael, Michael O'Mardian. Michael yeah. hello. It was amazing. Good Vince connection. Vince Gill and Amy Grant sang on a song. It was just a really, it was like a dream come true, the whole experience. But in relaunching, my church is really supporting me in Texas, and they're like, just go and share this music. Mm -hmm. And so part of the very first thing that I thought was, I want to go back and travel in Canada because I just, I really feel it's home, you know? And it's just, there's something about where you started out that's just a part of who you are. And so uh, hopefully doing a lot more tours across the country in the future. You are so steady, so centered. <laughs> you, you, you've, the work has paid off. It's just uh, great to see, and what we'll hear, even in the next piece, in all of these pieces, mm -hmm. y you started out wanting answers to deep questions. Mm -hmm. You were a believer, but you were wrestling it out with God, and, and we're the beneficiaries. It continues to be the flavor of your songwriting. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that in life, when we can try to be courageous and honest, I a producer once told me, um, or actually he said, and I read this quote, if you're not a little bit embarrassed by how exposed you are and what you've created, then you haven't done your job. And I thought that's so interesting because so many times we want to look cool, we want to put our best foot forward and prove to everybody how, how you know, we've got it all together. And this guy was saying, the stuff that really deeply connects is when you're truly honest about where you're at and how God is working out your, you know, how you're working out your faith in your relationship with God. And I've tried to really put that into my writing and I, you know, I think I have a long way to go and I, I definitely want to continue to, uh, you know, go along that journey with a group of people in an audience. I think we can kind of grow through those times together.